So today I think we can make a deep dive. Let's make the deepest dive that we can make for ourselves, for our experience, for our knowing who we are. Let's find that sincerity, that desire to not avoid anything. We want to pass by all illusions, right? Yeah. Maybe we start by taking a deep breath here. Just take a deep breath in and out. And you can take another one. Just feel really calming down here. Just allow. You may take more deep breaths if you wish. It's a great way to relax, become present, release worry. What can we change with our worries? Nothing at all. We don't need worries. We can just invite the Holy Spirit into our awareness even more. The Holy Spirit, I always liked that title, that name, Holy Spirit. That's very powerful. A Holy Spirit that is ever present. There is nothing it doesn't touch. It is everywhere. And ever accessible, available. And there are many techniques to go deeper, visualizations and techniques. But what we're offered through A Course in Miracles is kind of bypassing all such techniques. In today's lesson, I lose the world from all I thought it was. I lose the world from all I thought it was. And what keeps the world in chains but your beliefs? The only thing that keeps the world in chains it's our beliefs. That's why we want to release them. We don't need our beliefs. We can stick to one belief. A belief that releases all beliefs. Forgiveness. What can save the world except yourself? Capital S, yourself can and will save the world. So at this moment, we encourage ourselves to not avoid anything. You can take another deep breath if you need to. Help yourself to stay more inward. We want to stay in this deeper place as we go into this lesson. I 
what can save the world but your own true self. Belief is powerful indeed. The thoughts you hold are mighty and illusions are as strong in their effect as is the truth. Illusions are strong in their effects. A madman thinks the world he sees is real and does not doubt it. Nor can he be swayed by questioning his thoughts' effects. It is but when their source is raised to question that the hope of freedom comes to him at last. We need to find a source of our thoughts. We can relax a bit more as we listen to this. Yet is salvation easily achieved for anyone is free to change his mind and all his thoughts change with it. This is, this is a powerful, we can call it a technique. As we relax, every moment we're able to relax and change our mind. It's a huge gift to ourselves. Because now the source of thought is shifted. For to change your mind means you have changed the source of all ideas you think or ever thought or yet will think. So the message is very clear. And, and Jesus says that never has so much been given or so little effort. So we can stay here in this quiet, still place. And if the mind is nervous or busy, we can actually go in and change the source of our thoughts, release the ego source, the worries, the belief in separation, that's the false source that we need to release. And just find rest in this light that is within. We change our mind. And stay in this light place of waiting, of being, of resting, of being open, love. You free the past from what you thought before. In this, you free the past from what you thought before, you free the future from all ancient thoughts of seeking what you do not want to find. You free the future from all ancient thoughts of seeking what you do not want to find. You free the future from all ancient thoughts of seeking what you do not want to find. We free the past. And by freeing the past, we free the future. We become very, very present. The present now remains the only time. Here in the present is the world set free. For as you let the past be lifted 
and release the future from your ancient fears. You find escape and give it to the world. As you let the past be lifted, and you may even think about some events in the past, maybe recent event or events far away in the past, let them be lifted, let them go. And you release the future from your ancient fears. So we can allow ourselves to go back within again a bit deeper. Holy Spirit really is there in the present. When you release the future from your own ancient fears, you find escape and give it to the world. You have enslaved the world with all your fears, your doubts and misery, your pain and tears, all your sorrows. Press on it and keep the world a prisoner to your beliefs. Okay, we can take this in. You have enslaved the world with all your fears, your doubts and miseries, your pain and tears, and all your sorrows. Press on it and keep the world a prisoner to your beliefs. Death strikes it everywhere because you hold the bitter thoughts of death within your mind. It's a deep pledge, an invitation to release our belief in death. We let go of the sorrows, the miseries, doubts just for this moment just for now and the way we do this we allow you can even see it as you place it on a very light altar or plate if that helps you with the miserable thoughts and feelings, beliefs on this huge altar of light. I'm wearing a top that says there is no end to your light. That's this altar. It will take care of anything. The world is nothing in itself. Your mind must give it meaning. And what you behold upon it are your wishes. Act it out so you can look on them and think them real. Your mind makes the world what it is. It is nothing in itself. It is nothing in itself. It is not there. What is nothing? I hold nothing in my hand. There is nothing. This is what the world is without our beliefs. Nothing. So let's release it from everything we thought we believed. From all the projections. We have been so busy making it up, making it real, making it hard, difficult. People may come to your mind, put them on the altar. Feelings, allow them to 
to move through. Perhaps you think you did not make the world, but came unwillingly to what was already made, hardly waiting for your thoughts to give it meaning. Yet in truth, you found exactly what you looked for when you came. Okay, perhaps you think you did not make the world, but came unwillingly to what was already made, hardly waiting for your thoughts to give it meaning. How many of us have believed that we were born into a world that was already here? The mind made the world. And it's very complicated and intricate. And the plan is to make it so complicated that we forget that we made it. That's the ego's plan. So this ego belief, so this is how easy it is to release ourselves is to release just the ego in the mind, the worrisome thought. One time I realized my pathway is to relax and not worry anymore. The ego is worry. There is no world apart from what you wish. And herein lies your ultimate release. To know there is no world apart from what you wish. Herein lies your ultimate release. Change but your mind on what you want to see. And all the world must change accordingly. Sometimes we say that's easier said than done. But Jesus tells us here it is it is not difficult. It just takes a little willingness in the present moment. I want to change my mind about what I wish, what I want to see. The world changes accordingly. Again, go within and see what is it that you thought you wished for. What do you really wish for? Freedom. Truth, joy, maybe knowing who I am, ideas leave not their source. This central theme is often stated in the text. Ideas leave not their source. This central theme must be born in mind if you would understand the lesson for today. Ideas leave not their source. That's beautiful. That means that ego ideas stay with the ego. They can stay there. Spirit ideas, which is everlasting light and joy, they stay with spirit. 
That's where they can be found and experienced. It is not pride which tells you that you made a world you see and that it changes as you change your mind. But it is pride that argues you have come into a world quite separate from yourself, impervious to what you think and quite apart from what you share, what you chance to think it is. It is pride that thinks you came into a world separate from yourself. Again, Jesus says there is no world. There is nothing. This is the central thought the Course attempts to teach. Not everyone is ready to accept it. And each one must go as far as he can let himself be led along the road to truth. He will return and go still farther, or perhaps step back a while and then return again. There is no world. But healing is the gift to those who are prepared to learn there is no world and can accept the lesson now. Their readiness will bring the lesson to them in some form, which they can understand and recognize. Some see it suddenly, on point of death, and rise to teach it. Others find it in experience that is not of this world, which shows them that the world does not exist, because what they behold must be the truth. And yet it clearly contradicts the world. This is how it came to myself in experience. And some find it in this course and in the exercises that we do today. Some find it in this exercise we're doing right now. And even if you catch a little glimpse or all your attempts are beautiful and will be rewarded in your experience. You can't go wrong here. Today's idea is true because the world does not exist. Seeing what was the idea for today, I lose the world from all I thought it was. Today's idea is true because the world does not exist. And if it is indeed your own imagining, then you can lose it from all the things you ever thought it was by merely changing all the thoughts that gave it these appearances. Okay, let's take an experience that has been difficult. You can think of something. Maybe something current or something in the past that is still painful. And with this thing, this painful, difficult experience, he's saying you can change all the thoughts that gave these appearances, these experiences. Actually see it as if you choose it. You've chosen it. What can be threatening to you if you have chosen it? And you're greater than it. Your vast mind can just observe this maybe painful experience, memory. You can handle it this way. 
you change your mind about all the appearances around this topic. Just allow. Maybe it has to do with a person. The sick are healed as you let go of all thoughts of sickness. And the dead arise when you let thoughts of life replace all thoughts you ever held of death. The sick are healed when you let go of thoughts of sickness. And the dead arise when you let go of the thoughts of death. What an invitation. What a beautiful opportunity. What a powerful mind you have. You change the world by changing your mind, by changing your thoughts in the present. A lesson earlier repeated once must now be stressed again, for it contains the firm foundation for today's idea. You are as God created you. You are as God created you. This is an earlier idea that we need to stress again. You are as God created you. God created you perfect, perfect spirit, not body. God created you perfectly as you are, as self, as one self. There is no place where you can suffer and no time that can bring change to your eternal state. This is also my experience. As I visited, as I experienced the truth, this world was clearly a dream. And the expression that it was more real came to me. And in that, there was no time that could interfere. How can a world of time and place exist if you remain as God created you? But the ego can have a hold, a grip, the belief that we are what we are not can seem to have a grip. But to that, we offer our willingness to change our mind. This is what we need, the lessons. We need it. We may think we're going to do it later after we solve our problems, but this is to solve our prob problems. What is the lesson for today except another way of saying that to know yourself is the salvation of the world? It's another way of saying that to know yourself is the salvation of the world. I lose the world from all I thought it was. It's another way of saying that to know yourself is the salvation of the world. That's clear. We lose the world from everything else. We never were satisfied to be in a body 
to be a body experiencing time and space. It always felt too limiting, too little, too constricted. Maybe some glimpses of joy or pleasure, but they didn't last. So to believe your body is limiting, never satisfying, never fully satisfying. The only real satisfaction is to do God's will. You realize who we are. To free the world from every kind of pain is but to change your mind about yourself. There is no world apart from your ideas because ideas leave not their source and you maintain the world within your mind in thought. There is no world apart from your ideas because ideas leave not their source. Maybe this brings us a little, aha. Uh -huh. So we can change our ideas again. We can change our mind. Bring those ideas to the light. Ideas of limitation, worrying, worrisome ideas, doubts. Because we, if we change them, we change the world. Our goal is a whole different experience. An experience of our expansive self. There is no world apart from your ideas because ideas leave not their source and you maintain the world within your mind in thought. The world is not outside. It is maintained in the mind with our thoughts. Our thoughts about it. It's the only thing that can maintain it. So how beautiful that we can allow this shift, this change of thoughts, this realization. We are not the victim of the world or the, at the mercy of an outside world doesn't wish us well. That is not so. It was our thoughts that didn't wish us well. Our beliefs. We change our mind now. Yet if you are as God created you, you cannot think apart from him. If you are as God created you, then you cannot think apart from him nor make what does not share his timelessness and love. If you are as God created you, you cannot think apart from him or make what does not share his timelessness and love. You cannot make it. You can imagine it, and you did. But this is a course in releasing imagination. The word imagine, image, in. Release images. You cannot make 
what doesn't share God's timelessness and love if you are as he created you? I am as God created me. We're encouraged to repeat this often. I am not a body, I am free. I am still as God created me. Reminder. Truly helpful reminder. And we can say it again when we forget. Because the ego can seem to have a hold. Depression is from the ego. Depressed feelings. If they come back, even after you say this, even after you want to accept that you are as God created you, maybe five minutes later or two minutes later, there is a depressed feeling again. You can go into that and offer yourself the healing experience of releasing what feels depressed or suppressed, deprived. Depression comes from feeling deprived of something you want but cannot have. So Jesus explains depression, feeling deprived of something you want but cannot have. But he says, can you not have life? Can you not have truth? Can you not have love right now? The answer is yes, you can. Anything else is not worth having. Having and being are the same. We can gladly give over, give up everything we thought we wanted. So if you are as God created you, you cannot think apart from him or make what does not share his timelessness and love. Are these inherent in the world you see? Does it create like him? Unless it does, it is not real and cannot be at all. Again, empty, nothing. If you are real, the world you see is false. For God's creation is unlike the world in every way. If you are real, the world you see is false. For God's creation is unlike the world in every way. Do we want to accept this? Or might there be unwillingness to accept that you are real and that the world you see is false? And as it was his thought by which you were created, so it is your thoughts which made it, made the world, and must set it free, that you may know the thought you share with God. So here is the power of our choice. We can choose to set the world free and experience that we are created by God, that we are a thought in the mind of God. Not we as a collective, just one, we as one. The one mind, the, the only mind, the only one. Release the world. Your real creations wait for this release to give you fatherhood, not of illusions, but as God in truth. God shares his fatherhood with you, who are his son, for he makes no distinctions in what is himself and what is still himself. What he creates is not apart from him, and nowhere does the father end and the son begin as something separate from him. This is giving me goosebumps. Being one with God, what else could we want? 
There is no world because it is a thought apart from God and made to separate the Father and the Son and break away a part of God himself and thus destroy his wholeness. This sounds very destructive. This sounds almost evil. The world was made to break apart away from God himself and destroy his wholeness. Can a world which comes from this idea be real? Can it be anywhere? Deny illusions, but accept the truth. Deny you are a shadow briefly laid upon a dying world. Release your mind and you will look upon a world released. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Today, our purpose is to free the world from all the idle thoughts we ever held about it and about all living things we see upon it. Nice. And you don't have to feel that this is too difficult. Just take something in your mind right now. Just anything comes to mind. A rock, a tree, animals, kids, your partner, your house, vehicles. Take anything and just give it over. Just hand it over. Give it Give it away to God. The idle thoughts. They cannot be there. No more can we. For we are in the home our father set for us. Along with them. And we who are as he created us. Would lose the world this day. From every one of our illusions. That we may be free. This is why Jesus says you can. Receive salvation from a table. If you truly see a table, if you remove all, that, all your ideas about an object, you will receive salvation from it. This is what this is about. We lose our own ideas from the world. They cannot be there. I, who remain as God created me, would lose the world from all I thought it was. For I am real because the world is not. Even that thought, I am real because the world is not. This I am is far beyond the person. It's an experience of of self and there is no effort here and merely rest alert but with no strain and let your mind in quietness be changed so that the world is freed along with you Merely rest, alert, but with no strain. Beautiful. Relax. Let your mind in quietness be changed. So this change is no effort. Our mind will be changed in quietness as we rest. Alert, but with no strain. You need not realize that healing comes to many brothers far across the world, as well as to the ones you see nearby, as you send out these thoughts to bless the world. But you will sense your own release, although you may not fully understand as yet that you could never be released alone. You may not understand that healing comes to many, many brothers and sisters as you send out these thoughts to bless the world. But you will sense your own release. And you may not fully understand yet that you could not be released alone. 
throughout the day, increase the freedom sent through your ideas to the world. And say, whenever you're tempted to deny the power of your simple change of mind, say this, I lose the world from all I thought it was and choose my own reality instead. This is again, the course lessons are all about changing our mind from within. So anytime there is doubt, and some of us can experience that we go through doubts at certain times of the day. For me, the afternoons used to feel long or I used to get tired. Or, and that's the time to bring in the practice, even for a little while. When there is resistance, you know, you, don't, you can't push yourself, but to try a little bit extra. That's what I, that's how I practice. And that gave great rewards. If there is a little willingness, and usually I could find a little willingness under the resistance. And sometimes the resistance give us excuses like, I'm not ready for this. Oh, I can't really even believe this. This is, Jesus has covered that too. He says, you don't have to believe the ideas. Just practice them. So this thought, I lose the world from all I thought it was. Whenever you feel stuck. It's a very powerful tool. I lose the world from all I thought it was. From all I thought it was. And we may have, all of us may have some different themes. We could even think about the themes that our world consists of. You know, and, and use this lesson on those themes. This is true healing. This is true healing. We may think we can go to the world for healing, to healers or different modalities and there's nothing wrong to use it. Anything can be used for healing, but this is true healing. It's simpler than anything, change of mind. But nothing, I'd, I'd say nothing exists that the mind is more reluctant to than this healing, the real healing. What is the quote? There is a tendency to think the world will offer relief. Escape from problems, which is purposes to keep. Right. There is a tendency to believe the world can offer escape from problems that its purpose is to keep. So to go to the world for help and healing, you know, can even detain us in a way. Because the world's purpose is to keep the problems. That said, spirit can use anything. And if the fear is great, for, if the fear of true release is great, Jesus says, well, use some magic. So it's nothing wrong but it also may not shift much. This is true healing. Doing these lessons. So thank you for hanging in and, and uh, participating in this lesson today. Very profound.
but we don't have to go yet. We can open up the space for sharing if there is anything you'd like to lift up. Because this is one way of doing it, is to, to work through things, through the lessons. But the joining, Jesus says, the joining with a mighty companion, the joining in holy relationship, is one of the healing ways that, that that quickens quickens your homecoming, it's the joining, talking things through. Wow, what a helpful, great tool to be able to talk things through, explore. So let's go, Marie. Hi. Hi. Uh, I feel uh, now stuck with um, doing these lessons because um, I have a um, fear of hell. So that is a um, thing that I, I have been, it comes, it, it has been coming up since I was a like, teenager many times and I go through it and then it comes back. And, and now it has has come back, and um, I feel very suspicious about everything. And um, it see it seem always seems to come very very little triggers that I I this one came uh, Thursday. I I happened to read on Facebook some some. Uh, very conservative Christian uh, talking about how Jesus did um, take all God's hat hatred instead of us who deserve it. And there, there was also stuff about how God doesn't love everybody, but only this that does his will and everything like that. And I right away dropped it to the fear pit <laughs> and, and, um, This is like uh, the more most powerful thing ego <laughs> ego use for me because when I go go to that place I don't see any way out. Even even when I ask Jesus to help me out, it helps uh, for a few minutes, but then I drop back. Well, I think you're talking to the right person about this. I used to be a Christian. I grew up in a Baptist church and, you know, all these kind of fundamentalist ideas. Um, and I did face the fear of hell because when I left church, I thought I might, I might go to hell now because that's how I was taught. Exactly the things you, you have read, you have read, you know, and I, and I was so scared. I thought, but I have to take the step. I thought, so be it. <laughs> you know, it's where I need to take the step, you know. And I had heard in my mind many times this um, saying from the Bible, the Lord's corral is very wide. Yet I need to look up what the English translation is, because this is from the Swedish Bible translation. I, I think it is from the Bible. It might just be something coming from some somewhere else, but it's the Lord's chorale is very wide. And that I kept hearing over and over again. So it was safe to explore my mind. It was safe to release what felt limiting around Christianity. You know, because somewhere I knew God is love. God is allowing me to explore, I'm not going to be punished by hell. And even the course says, if there is a hell, it is, it is in this world. It is in in the mind that made up the world. So I think it's just a deep fear of punishment that the ego has projected onto these beliefs in hell. So you're actually facing the fear of punishment. 
this there was a strange idea that Christian woman shared that you read that Jesus took on God's hatred as if God can hold hatred, you know, and that he protected us then, you know, as if there is a fight between God and Jesus, like <laughs> how strange. Even the idea of sin, you know, the that you know, God said, "Don't eat that apple." You know, then you'll be thrown out of heaven. Which, you know, th that was the sin. And you could take that to that is this world, you know, following the temptation to think we want to be more than God is what the making of this world is like we took a bite of that apple but he's not calling it a sin he's calling it a mistake and an illusion and a dream <laughs> the nothingness you know it's nothing there so <laughs> it cannot be dangerous or fearful you know Does this help? How do you how do you think about it? Yeah, um, I feel um, uh, in really I know it is this way, but uh, I I feel this little complicated because I I probably I have so much um, hate I have been trying to forgive towards uh, Christianity. I, I still consider myself as a Christian, but I, I have a hate, hate towards, towards Christianity and I have very scary past life memories and um, about, um, about Christian church. And I a little bit believe like they are true that that I don't I have not I, I want to release them but I have not been able to release that that they are just that past lives are also a dream like this life and I, I li little bit feel myself as a victim that I have been accused as a victory that uh, and um, killed about it because of it and, uh, and I think because I have not forgiven it, mm -hmm. I I still need to. The things I I might get to uh, sometimes I get a message from someone uh, give up your witchery like like this this is something why this hell theme comes up mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. that I I could yeah. forgive and you can you can forgive this. This morning when I woke up, I did a past life meditation. I I I went in to a, just to a restful meditative state, and I I walked in to a realm of, of past lives, basically, and I asked, "What is it? What is it that still affects this life?" from a past life. And I saw some images. I saw, I observed some things and it feels like you're already aware of this. You said, which, which should. Like, so you have these images in your mind. Even now, I feel like you're even watching it now. So you're doing this with me now, that's beautiful. So, you, so this is still affecting you, but just by observing this now, just by looking at these, you know, painful experiences, like you were maybe burned as a witch, you were killed or you were blamed. And this is why you have this fear, but you're healing this now. It's like releasing this old being burned 
it's terrifying, of course. It's, it's and and having some Christians wishing you hell, or you know, that's that sounds horrific. So, yeah, yeah, allow it. Thank you. Can allow these feelings. Yeah. 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 This is it. Just facing it, and then coming. Coming back to the present without it, really, it's it, this does not have to affect you, Marie. This is really meaningless ideas. I release the world from all I thought it was, and you, you are doing that. You're releasing the world from this very unhelpful idea. It's a very ungodly idea. Mm -hmm. You know, which is, you know, had wisdom, you know, you have a wisdom of spirit that is profound, beautiful, you know, that wants to extend and expand, that there is nothing ugly about that. And you can call yourself maybe a miracle worker instead of a witch, you know, <laughs> which has <laughs> received a bad reputation. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it feels good. You know, I've faced so much Christian stuff, you know, growing up and having lifetimes of being a nun and a monk and Catholic, and, you know, pious, very like priest-like and like an obedient kind of very um what is the word like when you hum yeah humble or falsely humble or yeah. you know yeah we can clear all these old old ideas shake them off <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of us have this unconsciously or consciously because we grew up in this Western world. Many of us had past lives in this Western world that is very um, stamped by Christianity, especially Europe, you know, so many years of, of being misdirected into this. You know. But I always, or when I started taking in what Jesus has to say in the course, I, I started realizing, well, this is just something the ego has used. The ego has used Christianity in my consciousness to trap me, you know, in false ideas. I think true Christianity or Christhood you know, is free of all the limiting things, you know. So real, true Christianity is very pure, you know, and, and that's it's spirit speaking to us and through us. And we can forgive everything else. We can forgive everything that is limiting. And the beliefs about sin, guilt, hell. You can laugh at it or smile at it, or you know, you, you never have to feel affected by it again. If there is more, you can just do the same practice of allowing, of observing, and releasing it. So thanks for bringing this up. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> good. good to see you both. Welcome to YouTube. Okay, anybody else? Maybe a few words from you like. Are you from Sweden? Yes. <laughs> it's good yeah. to have you here. Yeah, wonderful. I just feel touched and peaceful. That's beautiful. That sounds great. 
Well, welcome to our sessions. And, Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we see you here again. And if if you want to talk yeah. about something, we're available. I, my idea is to, to try to join on Saturdays. Beautiful. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay. Did anyone else have their hand up? How about you, Sid? So feel like you're going through something and maybe you, you want to stay in your process, but can be with you for a bit. Was it something around the Marie's share around the Christianity? No. no. Yeah, no, that was that was just healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, did this is this uh, when people come in and has so much of my past people. It's also healing, but it's so special. When you're reminded of so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. No, it was but it was very intense. Very strong. Very strong. Mm. Yeah, it was Inga. Mm. It's very beautiful. Mm. Was there something around your mother or something? My grandma, my grandmother, my mother's mother. Mm. And she's, of course, her name was Inga. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't see the name first, and then I heard it, mm -hmm. and I looked, and I was like, yeah, yeah. So you went into some healing. She was just there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can feel her. She is here. Yeah. Yeah, she's... yeah, and she's she's so much not like she was right now, she's, you know. She's doing better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she didn't want to live, so no. she... Sorry about the dog. We don't hear it. Good. She stopped eating. Very... Yeah, and my grandfather, that was the story from, uh, from Mari, is the same. I was, I was also brought up by my grandparents, not brought up by them, but I met Christianity through my grandfather. And he was just a loving person and he was lovely to everybody. But there was these rules also. So it's just, yeah, they're just both here. Mm -hmm. I just, well, I'm glad you had. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. Thank you, Mary, Inga, and you all guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. Good. Okay, now. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And thanks for welcoming me here today. It's my first time in this kind of Zoom. Uh, yeah, I felt such a sense of peace during the lesson. I was mostly listening to it, eyes closed and just kind of visualizing things at the same time. It was really, it really brought me to a place of peace. Yes, mm, and trust. And also listening to this uh, um, Maris sharing and your conversation it was very healing for me as well because um yes i was uh 
born in a very Christian family. <laughs> my my parents and most of my relatives are devoted Christians, like conservative Christians, and I have been struggling with uh, fear of hell myself also earlier, more more earlier, and and even like uh, I have been. Um, I have like lately I have been struggling with finding a sense of safety around people like the people I meet at school or you know the people I meet in my everyday life I have been struggling to be kind of to allow myself to be fully myself with other people and about a year ago I realized the reason and I kind of found the root reason, and the root reason was that uh, I'm afraid that if I would be fully myself with other people, I would get killed for that. And mm -hmm. there's this kind of fear, and I don't have any mm, clear memories of my past life, but there could be something similar maybe, or something that... Mm -hmm. uh, showing my real self would be dangerous for myself for some reason and I think um, yeah a lot about what you were discussing uh, about this fear of hell was really resonating to me and thank you for that <laughs> mm, thank you thank you for sharing Mina mm -hmm. I hear the message just share follow your heart that is what you're doing, and you can carry on doing that. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Peter? Hi. Hi. What, what was shared uh, resonated with me, with the others, but I, I don't think I want to speak, but I don't know how to speak about that, actually. It just feels like a beautiful dark place. I don't really understand it. Um, but that's not what I wanted to speak about, but I just, mm. you know, it happens here, so I, I sometimes think, oh, may just go with that then, but... Um, well, maybe there's something that will work in you here. You, you don't have to talk about it. You can no. probably talk about what you had thought to talk about. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I felt this rage. Uh, it sort of woke me up, actually, around Solvay and, and just something that happened yesterday and, and, and is a rage and... I don't really know. I just said I, I just said to her I felt angry with her this morning. And only then do I kind of see there's a deep intensity behind it. And it seems to be related to um well firstly I I notice I feel fearful of admitting that that rage. It seems to be about um, what I experience of where I haven't been loved or begrudging behavior or holding back. Or, and, um, and there was this particular situation which was, was sexual, so I, I don't really need to go into its specifics, I don't think, but it just... Um, It's, but it's not only that, it's it's just, it brings up, I think what it brings up is this rage I have of growing up in a world of family or of not being loved, I guess, just to put it simply. But, um, and actually the rage can come up when I am loved, when I haven't been loved by somebody. That 
because it's like something I know this is happening and it's almost like that's what I expect. And then when it changes, it's actually quite hard to receive. Um, And I can get really, I can feel really pleased that something's changed in the other, but then I then a rage can come up really quickly afterwards. It quite shocks me. Um, so fear of change, perhaps. Fear of change. With the with the other, you mean? Yeah. This fear, always fear connected to rage and anger. But yeah, I, I don't think you have to understand it all. I no. think you're releasing an ancient rage. Yeah. And that's right. good. Normally, I would want to speak with um, Solvay more about it first before I come here. And I said that to her not very long ago, and she said, well, maybe you just say it here. So um, we didn't speak about it further. I just, I said to her, I felt really angry with her, and she'd already put her hand on, on mine and then withdrew it as soon as, I, as soon as I said that as well. So, and then I said, you just withdrew your hand. <clears throat> it's like this part of me that I don't know if it's looking for evidence, but um, no, I feel I just, I, somewhere underneath it, I just there's a hurt, but there's first there's this anger, this rage, really is rage. Um, So the day's lesson to release what yeah. you thought was there. I was when reading the lesson earlier, I was just I had more doubt about the illusion than I've had for a long time. And I just this rage seemed to keep it in place. What? Well, you had the thumb up come up when you said when I read the lesson earlier. <laughs> <laughs> <Some came up. laughs> like you're doing good spirit is like yeah you are looking at this so yeah now you're loving me now you're talking about the light and spirit and I, I now feel upset or it's upset, like like I said Thursday, of um, being seen, or mm -hmm. it's it all seems related to this other place. Yeah, I feel that you are observing a lot of vulnerability, and it's safe to do that, just to allow it. Because rage can come and there's fear of loss of control and not wanting to allow vulnerability. But I think you're doing great, Peter. You're you are looking at a lot of different feelings, maybe sometimes confuse confusion too. And, It's really just to keep going. And I've been questioning that. Mm. Which, having always been someone who was incredibly determined, that was the thing that I was. And then, of course, I have to kind of, it feels like I have to let that go. You know, and, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then. Yeah, I'm not sure if I trust myself or trust God, really. I 
instead of that. <laughs> yeah, just want to mention this, this being willing to look more at the fear of abandonment, which is always often has terrified me and I've experienced, felt like I experienced that, the hurt of that come up a lot, especially after end of relationships. And I just felt, I feel willing for that, but it, I feel, oh, sometimes it all feels, what am I doing, this is too much. Or, I feel, I also feel like something around just maybe connects with that health thing, but it's like if I, when I go into all this stuff, this contaminate thing, um, I, I'm concerned about it. And so I concern feeling this rage, this wow. fear of hurting her or miscreating or, mm. Yeah, it helps to go and deal with it with with God, with spirit, and not let it get out onto her. Yeah, it's not just with her, but yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, just to be determined that you can shift. <laughs> Telling me to be determined, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's such a fine line for me, you know. For healing, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but it's just such a trigger place somehow. Mm. I feel, I feel like that determination has it's like being willful, willful independence. Mm. You know? um, yeah. Yeah, um, that's not what I'm talking about. No, no. I, I mean the belief that shift can happen, that the idea, the belief that that the mind can change, like even through today's lesson, you know that 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 is what I mean. Yeah, that you you know that that is not only possible but inevitable. You know. Yeah. yeah. Right at this minute, I don't know it, but like yesterday's lesson, it was very clear to me that it's inevitable. Mm. Um, right now, it, it it feels a very familiar place. It's not. It's not going to happen for me. You know. Yeah. Just. Not but just to know, Peter, I mean, what you're going through, you're in a kind of a little uncertain place, both of you, yeah. around your home, around your car. True. So it's kind of probably has triggered the abandonment. It's triggered yeah. some old feelings. And just to know that helps. Yeah. And you can just kind of be gentle and go through this, you know, take time with yourself to allow it happen. Yeah. Trust the healing. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I mean, I, I sort of said something like that yesterday. I, I do. I am sort of, I think we're both aware that uh, it's triggering both of us that change. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's been helpful just to come yet again. Feels like um, <laughs> much the same stuff, but. I, I mean, I feel bad about that. Yeah, but maybe. Can yeah, I can feel the abandoned place now. Yeah. Mm. It's separate, you know. It's, It always felt more worldly. It's starting to at least feel a bit more of spirit. Separation. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're knowing the way 
to reconnect with spirit, like taking some deep breaths and go, you know, going within and just uh, intention to reconnect. Very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And blessings to you both. It's, it's you're gentle. Be gentle with yourselves. Did you want to say something, Solveig? I, I think I like to put something on your altar. It's like yeah, I I um, I was aware this morning of the piece of told me that he had the same that in rage. I was aware of um, kind of like walking on eggshells, and I was I was just looking at it, and I think I have this belief. Of, actually being the cause of his anger. So I have this guilt come in. And I like to put that on the altar. Um, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, this old habit of, of thinking of things I should have done differently or something. Mm. And it is the guilt. It is the guilt that is the cause of the problem is always the guilt in the mind to, yeah. to release and that's that guilt stemming from the separation relief so yeah put the guilt on the altar to allow that first to move through yeah yeah your relationship keeps serving <laughs> for healing it's good. I I hear it's intense, but it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So keep releasing the guilt. Yeah. Yeah, you're so loved. Thank you both for sharing. It's precious to be together for healing. It's very valuable, meaningful, don't you think? <laughs> Emily, <laughs> can feel you. <laughs> Emily is so brave. She doesn't speak English very much. You do a little and you understand a bit. Otherwise it's French. And, and But she has come here. She flew in an airplane for the first time in her life yesterday. <laughs> so very, very brave. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Well, if there are no more shares here, I see no more hands. We'll, we'll leave you with today's beautiful lesson and, and a big blessing. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And if anyone who watches this would like to join in, just send us an email, contact at awaken to love. Met. If anyone would like to donate, we receive donations through PayPal, uh, paypal.me forward slash ACIM love. Paypal.me forward slash ACIM love, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and it's not a requirement. And thank you to you also who have been donating. It's very supportive. And thank you all for being, for joining in. Yeah, we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.
Love you. <laughs> I know. Bye bye. <laughs>